What is it that makes the Zelda series so great? Is it the bosses? The dungeons? Or what about the rock-solid lore? <laughs> no, that definitely cannot be it. At the request of my channel members, I've come up with an idea for a hypothetical Zelda game which would make my dream Zelda game. Stay with me as I present to you my brainstorming for The Legend of Zelda Cloak of Shadows. My name is Andy, and welcome to Zeldom. Usually Nintendo starts their brainstorming process by coming up with a theme and unique mechanics before they even begin to consider the world building and story. But I am not Nintendo, so I'm going to do things Zelda style. Or in other words, start with the game's structure and story first. I know I have an unpopular opinion here, but I actually really enjoy linearity in Zelda games. To me, the most interesting part of the Zelda games have been the storytelling and lore, regardless how continuous it is between each game. Don't get me wrong, I love the open world of Breath of the Wild and agree that it's going to be an expectation of 3D Zelda games from here on out, but I prefer more direct storytelling where it's told as you play, not before and in between play. To do this, we'd have to play with a very delicate balance between open world gameplay and linear storytelling since it's very difficult to get the best of both worlds. But since this is a hypothetical game we're talking about, we're going to assume it could be pulled off. I'm not a professional game designer, and I don't mean to sound like I know this would work great, but as a fan, I'd like to blend these two archetypes by giving a false sense of an open world. By this, I mean the overworld should feel very large and interconnected with each other, but still driven by plot points and progression throughout the game. The game could be flexible and technically allow players to travel and explore many areas in the early phases of the game, while restricting access to necessary dungeon areas or regions essential to the story. As long as the overworld was large enough to make players feel like they could go exploring while restricting critical areas, this could work. However, this would mean that this vast space should be filled with actual content, not just barren wilderness like Hyrule Field in Twilight Princess. So what should we fill this overworld with is a big question. While brainstorming, I went through several ideas for the aesthetic theme of this game. The first idea I had was steampunk, which would make Hyrule a much more industrial but gloomier kingdom, or at least the castle area. I disbanded this because I wanted it to still be easily recognizable as a Zelda game. Instead, what if it were slightly futuristic, the most prosperous and advanced Hyrule civilization has ever been? What would normally be small villages in other games would be the size of Castletown, and the actual Castletown in this game would be this glorious city. This would allow us to introduce countless new landmarks, buildings, towns, and so forth, while including several landmarks and other references to other titles in the series to make a deceptive open world appearance. Now we can start considering the story of the game and where this would fall into the timeline. As we just decided, in order for it to have this aesthetic, Hyrule would have to be at its best throughout the entirety of the current timeline. As such, I think it would make the most sense for this to occur 10,000 years before the events of Breath of the Wild. This is such a mysterious period of time in Hyrule's history that there's plenty of lore established from creating a champion in Breath of the Wild, yet there's still plenty of potential to write an entire story out of it. Creating a champion, otherwise known as Masterworks, includes a timeline which lists events referencing Ocarina of Time through the current events of the game. In this timeline, it specifically states that more than 10,000 years ago, civilization is highly advanced thanks to the technology of the Sheikah. And on page 366, there's a passage that says, that 10,000 years prior to Breath of the Wild, the kingdom became so culturally and technologically advanced that even the monsters that roamed Hyrule no longer posed a threat to its people. This enables us to implement our idea for this hypothetical Zelda game into this place in the timeline. It has enough lore for us to make our story continuous with the pre-existing content, yet not too much so we don't have to worry too hard about making contradictions. However, this does mean that this game would have to be a spiritual prequel to Breath of the Wild in the fact that the Divine Beasts, Guardians, Sheikah Towers, and so forth will have to appear, or at least be referenced in the game, since this is the era in which they come from. And remember, this also means that this game will occur when the first Calamity Ganon strikes, so that will definitely have to be a large event in the story. In order to prevent this video from being 3 hours long, we're just going to create the main plot and major details we'd like to incorporate into this game. So with that established, let's write the gist of the story. To begin, let's figure out where our main protagonist Link should come from. I've always loved getting a glimpse of what Link's life was like in other games before the main plot unfolds, and I don't want this to be any different. The opening should show Link in his natural setting, but what is it? Well, we've said Sheikah technology has to be very prevalent in this era, so I'd like to make him the apprentice of a Sheikah. 
However, the Sheikah won't be a researcher, but instead a fighter and magic user similar to Impa from Skyward Sword, Ocarina of Time, and Age of Calamity. For the sake of this video, we'll just name Link's mentor Impa. Here, Impa would be the chief of Hyrule security. Since monsters don't pose much of a threat, Hyrule's army won't be as active, but Link, having the spirit of the hero, naturally is interested in learning as much about combat as he can. You could be a friend of Impa's who knows the ancient combat techniques of the Sheikah and the Lost Hylian Warriors, and after the tutorial section of the game, Impa would tell Link of some suspicious occurrences within the Sheikah organizations and throughout Hyrule, which would serve as Link's call to adventure. This is usually the point of the games where the player is given access to the central mechanic in the game. In Twilight Princess, this would be Wolf Link, in Wind Waker, getting the sail, etc. So this is where Link should probably gain access to whatever the game's central mechanic will be as well. So as the story progresses, perhaps after the first three dungeons, Link and Impa would discover signs that Ganon would be returning soon, and they would report that to the King of Hyrule. Yet they would also get suspicions about the leader of the Sheikah, who is overconfident when telling the King Ganon won't pose much of a threat against them. At this point in the game, I like to add short foreshadowing cutscenes of the Sheikah, like how A Link Between Worlds did with Hilda after each dungeon. This will also allow the player to gradually understand that this character will be the main villain instead of Ganon. After the last five dungeons, Calamity Ganon would awaken and of course be defeated like how the legend in Breath of the Wild tells, but this actually won't be the final boss. The events of the game and previous dungeons would hint at a secret faction of Sheikah researching how to harness Ganon's power for their own gain, where that Sheikah leader is their boss. Here, we can twist Breath of the Wild's origin story of the Yiga clan. After Ganon's defeat, Link would have to go through one last dungeon, which would be the Yiga Lair to prevent the leader from using Malice to gain power equal to Ganon's and end up being the final boss. Although Link will be victorious, the Yiga's plot will be exploited, which could lead to the king bearing Sheikah technology and losing their trust in them as told in Breath of the Wild. Now that we have the main idea of the story out of the way, let's talk about the game mechanics. Personally, my playstyle in games tends to be much more elaborate. Hack and Slash has never really been my thing. As such, I'd love to include some complex combat and or stealth mechanics that are more complex than what we've seen so far in the series. The stealth missions in the franchise have previously been fairly tedious and in my opinion haven't been used to their full potential. For the most part, it's just been waiting for guards to walk by and sneak behind them, but that doesn't usually take into account many factors such as sound or leaving footprints behind when there's snow, sand, and mud. But what if we did have a mechanic with those features? This would definitely be a defining mechanic, and that would make it stand out from other titles in the series. Not only would it give the game a cool and unique aesthetic, but it would also allow for a variety of new types of dungeons, puzzles, and layouts. Previous Zelda games have made minor attempts like this, such as Breath of the Wild with the Yiga hideout infiltration, but Breath of the Wild, as well as all other Zelda games up to this point, just didn't have the proper mechanics for those types of stealth missions. Due to this, we would need to have a different style than the dungeon or level design to make this experience much more enjoyable for the player. As I see it, we could incorporate this stealth mechanic by making it the central mechanic to the game. As such, Impa could teach Leek a Sheikah technique that would grant him the stealth, but it's kind of a stretch so I think imbuing it into an item is much better. Now to decide what to make this item. Since it should be clearly Sheikah related, I'd like to include that symbolism as such and this could draw some aesthetic references to the concept of the Lens of Truth and Mask of Truth from Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask. For simplicity, I think we should make this item a cloak with a design that references Impos from Skyward Sword, but redesigned slightly to look more appropriate for Link. With this, I intend to develop the story in such a way that blends Hyrule's bloody history and its connections to the Sheikah from Ocarina of Time and blend it with his prequel to Breath of the Wild. With this established, I think it's safe to title the item, The Cloak of Shadows, since we will be incorporating some lore from Ocarina of Time's Shadow Temple and it's tied to the ancient Sheikah. Sure this will basically just be the invisibility cloak from Harry Potter, but it will at least have a cool appearance whenever it's not invisible. I can see plenty of ways to make this useful in the game. Link could use this to sneak into certain portions of Hyrule's castle town or city to gain access to new regions, and other regions could remain locked until later in the story just by having Sheikah Tech monitoring that area that could detect them even while invisible. This could also have key applications in dungeons, such as sneaking around enemies for ambushes, or stealing a key from an enemy kind of like Link does with the whip and Skyward Sword in the Ancient Cistern. As dungeons get more difficult, there could be mud or water on the ground that makes it more difficult for Link to get by undetected in a stealth mission, which would make the puzzles more advanced. 
It would also be cool if some enemies could smell or detect Link even while stealthed, such as Skulltulas with their spidey senses. The final dungeon could even push it to the limits where Link has to traverse through the Yiga's or Evil Sheikah's lair to get to the main villain and final boss. As the Yiga members are guarding the area, they would be wearing masks similar to Breath of the Wild, which would serve as the Mask of Truth and Lens of Truth from Ocarina of Time, allowing them to easily detect Link. This would make the player have to get a lot more creative to sneak through. Because it would be kinda lame if Link were to just sneak around everywhere, without going Rambo every now and then, I'd also like to bring back some more advanced combat mechanics as I previously mentioned. In my opinion, Twilight Princess did a very good job with its combat mechanics with the hidden skills, and I'm honestly not sure why Nintendo didn't even attempt to bring some of those moves back in Skyward Sword or Breath of the Wild. The hidden skills were a great way to make fighting in a Zelda game more strategic and interesting as opposed to the basic attacks from other games. With the hidden skills in Twilight Princess, one could combo a basic shield bash into a home splitter to take down otherwise rather difficult enemies, and make it feel really cool for the player. There were other moves like the back slice, where Link could be more defensive when not sure how to fight a new armored enemy, but when dodging an attack could quickly roll behind the enemy and do an uppercut spin attack to penetrate the armor. And finally, my personal favorite, the mortal draw, where Link lets an enemy approach him without a sword drawn, for say, a dark nut, one of the most difficult enemies in the entire franchise. Then right before the enemy attacks, Link will quickly draw his sword and deliver a fatal blow. All of these types of moves would bring back the more strategic and entertaining way to fight enemies. And of course, I'm not saying these moves should be exact clones from Twilight Princess, I'm just saying it could be used as a reference. The game should have far more than just a handful of skills from Twilight. For example, we could also add a parry plus counterattack like in Skyrim Sword and Breath of the Wild, as well as a new interpretation of the Flurry Rush. We could go on and on about ideas for Link's new types of attacks and other mechanics for this hypothetical Zelda game, but let's wrap it up. Without actually making the game, it's quite difficult to come up with side quests and specific details for anything, but I hope you've enjoyed this brainstorming session. Also, a huge thank you to my royal advisor and seldom nobility members for the request. If you've enjoyed this, please leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel for more Zelda content. Thanks for watching, Zelda out.